The biggest challenge that we're facing when we think about our oceans is a true lack of a holistic understanding of what's going on. In many places, we're operating in the dark. The ocean has vast potential, but we've come to realize that fisheries are not inexhaustible, that we can overfish them. Fishing has had the last 100 gatherers. You have a lot of freedom to do that, but also there's a lot of risk and reward. It's not only about catching a bunch of fish, it's about everything else that goes with it. It's important to me because it's something that I did with my dad, my brother. I'm doing it with my grandkids now. La pesca es la que nos mantiene al pueblo vivo. There are so many things at stake here. Food security for half a billion people around the world as climate change really impacts stocks, especially in some of the countries and areas most vulnerable. Livelihoods, fishing employs millions of people around the world and it helps maintain thriving and viable port communities. And then, you know, the ocean ecosystem is under threat. Information is the lifeblood of fisheries management. Without that, we can't do anything. And so emerging technologies help to make increased data collection possible. Dengan pengambilan data yang baik itu mencegah ikan-ikan itu sendiri punah. Ese sistema es por por el bien de, de nosotros pescadores tenemos que seguirla pescando con responsabilidad para que todas las generaciones que vienen nuevas. I have cautious optimism about the future, but we do have a lot of hurdles. The hope for the technology is that it works. That's first. Then we can start to consider how it's going to help us. Any data that's more timely, more accurate is going to reduce uncertainty. If you have better information and you're making better decisions around everything that happens in the ocean and around the ocean, There's been an arc in fisheries management. Without good policy, without good information, we've seen a trend towards overfishing. And overfishing really presents threats to, to people and environments around the world. With better information and smart policies, we've seen tremendous improvement in a number of fisheries, going from disaster to healthy. Fisheries have been stuck in the dark ages in terms of technologies. We collect a bunch of information right now, but we don't make very good use of it. In, in many fisheries in this country and certainly around the world, it's still a, a pen and paper process and sometimes it takes months uh, or, or even longer to get that data into the management system. Emerging technologies are used throughout other industries such as agriculture, oil and gas industries. The potential in the marine space is largely unrealized. It has a huge ability to allow fishermen to fish more sustainably and to make sure that their impacts on the ocean ecosystem are minimized. Harnessing technology to increase the timeliness, the accuracy, and the cost effectiveness of data that can be fed into management is critical to help more fisheries recover and thrive. On the West Coast, we really have a, a wonderful transformation success story. I started ground fishing in 1982. We had too many boats entered the fishery during that time period. By 1999-2000, uh, pretty apparent that stocks were in pretty bad shape. The fishery declared a disaster. The information that we had to feed into those assessments wasn't good. It was a pretty dark time in the fishery as far as way too many boats chasing way too few fish. A fishery cannot be thought of in isolation of anything else because everything is interconnected. If there isn't full data sets from either the commercial, the recreational, or the traditional harvest that happen in that area, single stock assessment leads to the complete devastating breakdown of ecosystems and communities. If you're landing maybe 30 or different species on a trip, all those species have different limits. We want to do something different and manage for the long term. And one of the ways is catch monitoring. And that really did start to change the incentives in the fishery. Uh, we started to see dramatically reduced bycatch, perfect compliance with total catch limits. 
The more transparent you are, the more you can trust the data, the more accountability you have, the, the more robust is the data, the, the more faith that a fisheries manager who isn't on the water and is relying on this data to tell them what's happening, the better off they can do their job. We know down to the pound what's coming out of the water and it's a, a great way to manage fisheries uh, from a scientific perspective, but it's very cumbersome for fishermen. That is a key barrier to increasing the amount of information we collect in fisheries. With technology, all of a sudden we're increasing the number and the different types of fisheries that we can monitor. So fishermen started working with regulators to try to pioneer electronic monitoring. Most of the larger vessels are already successfully using electronic monitoring, but there are some technological challenges to work through. There's trust in EM systems now that they can be used as data collection tools. We can accurately collect the same or very similar information as human observers were doing. What we're grappling with now is how do we implement things like remote transmission of data and whether or not you can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to actually say they're setting at this point, they're hauling at this point, they're sorting at this point, they're resetting at this point. More traditional electronic monitoring requires mailing hard drives um, for human video review. And so if there's a fishery where boats are out for six months, some of the tuna fisheries, for example, wireless transmission is the only way we're going to get good and timely information off those vessels. And then that AI, using that activity recognition, the whole system could be significantly more seamless. In order for electronic monitoring to be really effective for any one particular fishery, there's always going to have to be modifications. So the next challenge is, how do we make it so this technology that is great for these guys would also work for these guys who may be a lot smaller? Most fishermen do not want to catch something they have to throw over or over harvest anything and have made the changes to adapt, have done different innovations, whether it's in gear or fishing habits. Fishermen like Paul, uh, small trawlers that fish closer to shore, really haven't been using electronic monitoring. There are relatively high uh, catches of really small flatfish and other species that sometimes hard to differentiate with the naked eye. Right now they need to sort uh, all of the individual species to baskets. There's a weight estimate made of those. It takes a long time. With this system, basically what we're trying to do is be able to automatically identify uh, discard species. Most of the fish will go across the conveyor belt where they will sort out the fish that they want. The fish that they discard are the ones that will be going through our camera shoot. We can use AI with the camera to identify species and get size. Now we know exactly what's getting harvested and what's getting taken out of the ocean to a good degree of certainty that works both for the industry and for the environment. Using these kind of tools, AI, species ID, cell phones, wireless transmission of data, activity recognition, we can bring accountability to this fishery, but also a number of other fisheries around the world. The first time I went down the Gulf and fished for red snapper, boy, I tell you what, it wasn't just the fish that got hooked, I got hooked too. Why isn't it important? I mean, it's a resource that I enjoy harvesting. It's a resource I enjoy going to the restaurant and having. It's a resource that plays an important part in the, in the ecosystem of the Gulf. Recreational fisheries in some parts of the country account for more than the commercial catch. That's especially true in the Gulf of Mexico with the red snapper fishery, but we don't really have a good handle on how many boats are participating. What we're doing is we're putting a camera at a natural pass or a pinch point where vessels have to funnel through to get to the ocean. Recording that effort and using artificial intelligence to figure out how many vessels and of what type go through that pass. We have implemented two systems in the United States. It does take time to build the algorithms, to gain confidence in them, and then to get a level of reliability out of them. But when you get there, these efficiencies could really be a game changer. 
The more accurate we can be, it benefits everyone. We're getting a count of the number of boats going out, getting an average catch per boat when we interview them dockside, and then taking those two elements and being able to expand it to the total catch as well as the total number of anglers that went fishing. Everybody thinks the ocean's so vast. If the science tells us we can harvest X number of this fish and still build the fishery back up, that's what we should be looking at. Getting more regions to adopt this technology it can really push the needle on fisheries monitoring and recreational fisheries, but also small-scale fisheries. Blue seaming crab fisheries in Lampung is very important. The value is really high. It's number three, the biggest export from Indonesia. The urgent thing that needs to be solved is the sustainability of the blue seaming crab itself. Everyone can catch blue seaming crab. If you have money, you can buy a boat. If you have net, you can go fishing and then catch blue seaming crab. At the moment, there are no exact number on the fishers in Lampung and also the stock status. All over the world, small-scale fisheries account for approximately half of all fisheries catch and we just don't know how much is being caught. Saya menunggu nelayan mendaratkan rajungan di pesisir kanal atau bisa dibilang lapak lah di sana. Setelah nelayan datang, saya menunggu mereka mengeluarkan rajungan dari jaring. Di situ baru saya collecting data. Technology can improve sustainability by efficiency. Enumerator collect the data in the paper. It takes like three or four days to input into the system. With this app, it can help collect the data through their phone and then deliver to the cloud. Half of the world's population uses the internet now. There's at least a couple of billion smartphone users. And so these tools are not unknown to the vast majority of the world's population. We need to know about how much is the effort. Imagine like four to ten hours a day to sit in front of the port counting the vessel. If you have the camera, you just record the footage and then assign AI to identify the vessels. We can pair that data with the data we're collecting with Fisheries App to estimate the amount of catch. Dengan pengambilan data yang baik juga kita bisa tahu stok rajungan itu masih ada atau tidak untuk mencegah rajungan itu guna atau nelayan menjadi tahun-tahun kedepannya tidak bisa menangkap rajungan lagi. The implementation of electronic monitoring or other technology or data collection solutions is going to start to happen in more places. Of course, there's going to be resistance from fishermen who don't want to expose themselves in that way. Instantaneous, constant information. We can see the environment, you know, the changes that are happening as they are happening. Advantages are that it minimizes the bycatch and keeps all, all fisheries in a, a balance so you're not overfishing uh, one species to the next. But I don't like the privacy factor at all. Being monitored every day, you wouldn't want cameras in your home. And this is home away from home. We live on these boats more than we do on land. The issue that we're facing right now is imposing the technologies on people. If industry doesn't want this to happen, it's not going to happen. No matter how good it is, they have to be able to embrace it. How can we design the right system that has the right protections around confidentiality, but it's also cost effective and returning benefit back to the fishing industry? In the commercial fishery, data is in incredibly valuable in terms of you know, productive fishing spots, bycatch avoidance plans, improved markets that care about sustainable fishing that are interested in what's coming out of the ocean, what the impacts are. 
a lot of our stocks are managed under quota and without the ability to accurately record what quota has been taken, fishers wouldn't have the opportunity to access that. This is a technology to deliver really high quality data to the benefit of the recreational fisher. Yang di laut kan kita nelayan itu banyak yang tidak mau didata. The community didn't feel the data is useful for them. If we want participation of the fisher community, we also need to bring back the data and help them to improve the livelihood. So the fishermen have optimist spirit because they were and want to help as they can. This isn't just about technology for technology's sake. We're really trying to couple it with the right incentives and the right management. The more effective we are at returning value to fishermen, the more effective we'll be at generating greater uptake. La pesca de la curvina es el sustento que nos mantiene vivos al pescador. No hay un ser humano aquí en el, en el Golfo de Santa Clara que no participe en, en la pesca de la curvina. ¿Cómo no uh, decir yo voy a cuidar esta área, pero también que no nos quiten la pesca de la curvina porque pues es de lo que vivimos 100% el pueblo pesquero es. There are a number of fisheries that have bycatch challenges and some of those species are endangered. We're really seeing severe restrictions be put on those fisheries. Obviously we want to see accountability, we want to make sure that there aren't significant impacts on important ocean resources. But if they could demonstrate through the use of technologies that they're able to fish it cleanly, there's also potential to directly improve fishermen's bottom lines. El sistema Pelagit sí es un sistema que traemos en las embarcaciones para que así nos ubican, dónde andamos, qué área andamos pescando. Con eso podemos demostrarle al que nosotros estamos llevando una pesquería responsable y que nuestra actividad es que no interactúa con ninguna otra especie. Y otros con tecnología es una plataforma que se llama Web Control Pesca, diseñada para poder tomar fotos de la embarcación que sale, tomar el escaneo del código de reconocimiento óptico que trae el pescador a bordo. El objetivo es tener información lo más precisa posible sobre lo que está pasando en el mar, lo que está pasando en playa y cómo está llegando el producto a planta y cómo se está vendiendo. Es importante toda esta trazabilidad del, del producto Si sabemos cuánto entró, cuánto se está capturando, tenemos, podemos manejar un mejor precio. ¿Para qué sacar una tonelada y la vas a malbaratar? Mejor sacas 500 kilos y das los un buen precio. We've been able to successfully prove out the technology. Now, our goal really is that these technological solutions can be adapted to fisheries around the world and uh, demonstrate those conservation benefits, but also so that fishermen can continue to fish, continue to make money, continue to, to feed their communities and, and beyond. Lo que los pescadores hemos hecho con tecnologías nuevas, cómo se lleva a cabo la pesquería de curvina, yo pienso que eso nos da la garantía que se está cuidando no nomás para pescar dicho recurso y poder que nuestras próximas generaciones tengan también los beneficios como hoy. We need to understand what's happening under the ocean. Sustainable fisheries management is the key. If you improve the stasis of the stock, you improve the state of the ecosystem, we need to adopt new and cutting edge solutions to solve the world's fishery challenges. In some instances, we have excellent fisheries data. In other instances, there's so much missing information. There is a better way of making decisions Technology is finally catching up with the fishing industry. You see a lot of optimism with that because people see the future and they see a lot of potential there. It's going to be more important than ever to change the way you fish and still be able to continue harvesting this fish and feeding people. 
there's a tremendous opportunity to create a more sustainable path. Making sure that we have good fisheries management, informed by good information, informed by new technologies, can really solve some of the most pressing challenges facing the oceans today.